Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Kevin Carr and I'm here in Brazil with my friend Guy and I just want to take some time to talk about bridging and the idea of glute activation and what we're really trying to get out of doing things before we lift like hip lifts. Okay, so one thing we always do uh, before our training sessions at NBSC is we're always going to teach some bridging, especially with beginners. I think teaching bridging is a really, really effective tool to teach people how to use their hips and more importantly, how to use their hips while stabilizing their spine. Lots of times people like to term this glute activation, but I don't really like that term because it kind of gives the idea to the client that your ass is like a light switch, that it's either like on or it's off. And that's not really what's happening. Our glutes are always working, but the problem is that a lot of beginners or people who don't really understand their body yet tend to substitute hip extension with lumbar extension, right? So they tend to, rather than extend their hips, they tend to extend their spine and get all the movement out of their lumbar spine. The reason I like to teach bridging in the warm up is because we're going to use this as an opportunity to teach our clients how to use their hips properly while stabilizing their lumbar spine. So I'm going to have Gee lay down right here, okay? And what we'll typically do is I'll ha we'll have them lay on their back just like this with their knees bent, okay? And I'm typically going to first start by teaching them to dorsiflex and pull their toes up towards their shins. Now the reason we do this is because lots of times beginners are going to do the opposite and they're going to try to push through their forefoot and that's going to allow them to use their calves and use their quads. And we want to take that option away from them. So just by simply having them dorsiflex and pull their toes up, it forces them to have to push through their heels. Now, if you're someone who's experienced, you could do it with the feet, the feet flat down. I just want the force coming through the heels, okay? So, Guy, I'm going to just bring these heels a little closer. Okay, good. What we want to do is we don't simply just want them to bridge, we want them to breathe, set their rib cage and pelvic positioning, and then bridge up. This is really important because by creating some stiffness on the front side using our obliques, getting our, our ribs internally rotated and depressed down, it's going to force us to have to get the movement through our hips. Okay, so what I'm going to have Guy do is he's going to take a big breath in the nose. I want him to exhale and draw his ribs down and in, so he's going to internally rotate to press his rib cage downwards. Now that it's moved down, then I want him to bridge his hips up, right? That means all the motion now is coming through the hips and he's nice and solid here through his midsection. He's going to hold for a couple seconds, come back down, take another big breath in. We're going to see him draw his ribs downwards, set, then lift. See, now he has a nice straight line going from shoulder to knee. Okay, what's really important is that our clients understand that they need to breathe and set the brace with the rib cage first and then lift. Okay, we don't want them to breathe and lift at the same time. We want them to make sure get set, then lift up. So what we're really doing here is, yes, we're getting their hips warmed up. There's a great warm-up drill to teach our clients uh, how to use their hips, but we're really just teaching them how to disassociate joints, right? How can they extend their hip without extending their spine? If we want to boil down like corrective exercise or motor control work to as simple as possible, we're just teaching people to disassociate joints and move the right joints with the right muscles at the right time, right? So we're typically always going to start a training session with bridging like this, especially with beginners. We start beginners with bilateral bridges because often if you start them on unilateral, you're going to get a hamstring cramp out of it, at least a couple of them. They're going to be grabbing the hamstring, having to drop their hips down. So it's better to start in a bilateral movement like this. Once we can progress them, we're going to move to a unilateral bridge. So I'm going to have Guy bring his right knee up to his chest. Okay. Now, if he needs some assistance, he can take his right hand and hug it in. That's going to do two things. One, it's going to make it unilateral. Two, it's going to help lock down his lumbar spine. With this hip inflection, it's going to be harder for him to extend his spine, right? So we're going to just kind of lock him in there. So beginners, we're going to have hug. Once someone's a little bit more advanced, I might have him move his hand to here and create an isometric between the knee and the hand. Now he's getting his hip flexor working at the same time, so we get a little two for one there. Okay, now in unilateral, we're gonna do the same exact drill. So what I want you to do, take a big breath in the nose, exhale, draw these ribs down, and lift. And you're gonna hold for a couple seconds. This really just looks like a split squat on his back, right? So again, we're just starting to practice positions we're gonna get into in the lift. So it serves as a great warm up to get the hips going, it's a great way to teach people disassociation, and more importantly, not glute activation, but just body orientation. How do you move your joints with the right muscles at the right time? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll get some more videos like this coming out soon. Bye.